This is Gustav from Zion Company. Enjoy this teaching. Bless you and please subscribe. Father, we just want to thank you and praise you and just glorify your holy, beautiful, majestic name. That we get to spend time in your kingdom. Father, I know that for some, even though <clears throat> we've been doing it for such a long time, some of us still just don't understand, don't have that perception, that revelation of how to go in. What does it mean to use your imagination? What does it mean to step in beyond the veil? We know that it takes work. We know that it takes practice. We know that it takes more than what we are willing to do. And so many of us just don't, don't get to that place. <coughs> but Father, I ask you to open up our hearts. Let us begin to perceive and receive the things that you have made available for us as sons and daughters right now, yeah, where we at, Father? Let's understand the fullness of what you have poured into us, the, the revelation of your glory in what you've given us, just all that we have as the saints to be propelled, to be lifted up, to be enhanced, to be grown and matured, so that we can really, at the end of the day, become what we're supposed to be, Father. We so desperately want to hold on to what we had. We want to hold on to what we know. We want to hold on to what we have revelation of. And we just don't want to move on to the next phase of our walk. And we've tried it, and it's worked for a while, and then it starts getting more difficult. And we think before we know it, we just go back to our old ways, because that worked. And we didn't have to study it. We didn't have to meditate on it. We didn't have to work for it. But Father, I pray that you open up your, heart, your, 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 your ecclesia's heart, Father. Let us begin to understand we are spirit beings. And in that revelation, you have given us the knowledge of who we are in you. And it is more than what we can ever fathom or understand. Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you, my King, for all of who you are and what you do. Incredible, beautiful, majestic Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Okay, how are you guys doing? Good. Now, for those who don't know, we've been doing the blood uh, through the book of a friend of mine, Ro uh, Rona. Theropolis. It's the, the blood book. It's an incredible book. Uh, I've put so many people onto this book, it's not even funny. And it's really because I, before I even started engaging with what I'm teaching today, this book was available to me. And I just started, I really just started touching base on stepping into the heavens. And this book opened up a realm for me to go into it. I mean, five, six years into it, almost seven years into it now, going through this book now. It's uh, just confirmation, confirmation, confirmation to deeper, higher, wider places that's available. So we're almost finished with it, but tonight we wanna, I want to do a section on uh, He Ever Loves to Do and Make Intercession for Us. Just to remind you that Yahweh is absolutely incredible and Yeshua is what I cl I, I'm clothed in. How many of you know that? Yes. And yes. We, don't, we don't see it like that because we want to... We want Him to do everything. We want Him to be everything for us. But He was purely my example. Yes. He wants me to step into Him. He wants me to step into all of who He was, all of who He still is, and all of who He was to be. If that makes any sense. Yes, yes. And I, and I just, before I start, I just want to kind of touch base on something. Me and um, Teresa Ball was just talking before we, we before we started the meeting, and uh, I look at so many of um, the students that comes to Spirit School, and for those on Facebook, those on YouTube, I want you to understand. You know, it's so easy for us to to find ourselves wanting to go back to our way of doing things in our yesterday, right. because the stuff that Yahweh is giving us today it takes work, and we were taught that it's not about work. It's something that no one can do for you. God will just bring you into that place. And so we wait on Him. Because we think that when Yahweh says, wait on me, He means just do nothing and I'll come and pick you up. Right. I'll come and take you into the heavens and I'll come and take you on a journey. And I will reflect my angels into your life and I will project my kingdom onto you. But I'm going to understand it doesn't it's never work like that. You know, the church has taught us that someone can come into your life, lay hands on you, and with magic, 
Ta-da! You are all of a sudden, you are dressed in his mantle. Now you can prophesy. Now you can heal the sick and raise the dead. And if it's the right mantle, now you can go into heaven. And whatever the mantle is that that man carry, you can now have it. But we slowly beginning to understand that's not how it works. All right. Right there, it's not no magic charm. Mm -hmm. There is hard work at hand. Yes. And the deeper you want to go, the deeper you will go in Him. Yes. Okay, but we are stuck in the old way of thinking. And I always say it's the Hebrew and the Greek way of thinking. The Greek way of thinking is where we're stuck in. Hmm. <laughs> and Yahweh just wants us to know, well, it's not going to be easy. That's why the Bible talks on Isaiah 2. It says, a company of people. That means not everybody. All right. It doesn't say that it's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. It's just saying that everybody is not going to make the cut. That's right. I'm not saying that everyone's not going to go to heaven for those who are in Christ. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Yahweh saying that I have a company of people that I long for, that I so desperately want to go to a deeper place in me. Yes. You know, that there's more than what we perceive. There's more than we, what we have received up to this point. And he's saying, I want to take you there. Yes. Yes. And the church is saying, well, I've tried it, and it worked for a little while, but then uh, it, it stopped. So now I'm just not going to do it anymore because it's obvious it's not working. It's not for me. Mm. But I don't even understand, and I said this to Teresa when we started. I said, well, the Lord's always related this to my, um, this type of, uh, my Christian walk's always been related to my workouts in the gym. <laughs> now, if you know anything about the gym, when you start working out, your body gets damaged. Your muscles are sore, your body is to go into a different mode. And for the first three months, uh, you find that you look bigger, you feel stronger. As a matter of fact, you see extreme results as a man. All right. Unfortunately, it's the same for women, and then women get all freaked out. Hmm. Women get freaked out and they say, well, I don't want to build muscle, I don't want to go bigger, because if this is what I see in the first three months, what am I going to look like in two years' time? Hmm. But what really happens is you're actually not growing any muscle. You're just experiencing the swelling of the muscle that's damaged and your body bringing in water retention and there's so much happening because of the change in your routine. All right. And then your body starts getting used to it and it will go back to its normal size and it will, it will still, still stay sore because you're constantly putting more weight on, doing more repetitions, so your body will bring in water retention, your muscle will be hurt and it will swell up, but it won't be as bad. And before you know it, you'll see that um, it's not like it used to be in the beginning. There's a slower progress, slower uh, change, but in your consistency, you'll get the results that you want. But it's not just about working out in the gym. You have to eat right. You have to take in the right amount of protein. Yes. You have to take in the right yes. amount of carbohydrates. Yes. Now, in today's life, you are t taught that carbs are bad. Mm -hmm. Stay away from carbs. But there's good carbs and there's bad carbs. Yes. There's saturated and unsaturated. There's, there's good food and there's bad food. There's, there's so much. You can have a steak that's bad, but you can have a steak that's good. Yes. You, know, that you can have chicken that's good for you and you can have chicken that's bad for you. There's so much that you need to learn. There's so much that you can uh, engage with in the revelation of what is good for your body, what's bad for your body. You know, um, for a big guy like me, when I go to the gym, I'm extremely slow. I'm in no rush. I take three, four minutes in between sets. I go as heavy as I possibly can. And there's no, there's no sit-ups in between. There's no running up and down the gym. I don't jump under the treadmill in between my sets. I don't do any of those things. I'm as slow as a tortoise. All right. Just taking my time, do five, six sets, add weight every time, do reps to failure, because I, my body responds respond extremely well to bulk up training where uh, my body is at rest almost all the time. My heart rate goes up because I do the heavy reps, heavy sets, and then I rest for three, four minutes. Then I'm recovered, I can go heavier. That's the idea. But then you get other type of training as well where you would, I, where you would start and instead of doing high reps, of a high, high weights, you do lower weights and you do um, high repetitions, and you may do sit-ups in between, you might do push-ups in between, that's like a CrossFit workout, you change the way around, and what happens in an exercise like that, your body releases testosterone. Testosterone is a growth hormone, and it changes your body's response to the workout. 
don't know if that makes any sense. You're giving us a, a fitness ex, um, a training ex, ex, explanation, yeah? But it's the exact same way in the church. And my engagement with Yahweh is the exact, especially what we're teaching right now. Because everything gets done in a corporate setting, it's almost exciting. Wow, we went to heaven. We had this engagement. It was incredible. It was powerful. I want to do it a lot. Again, you get home and let me just remind you, most of the church, the ecclesia, doesn't have the relationship with God that's reflected in the corporate setting. Right. Mm -hmm. right, right, right. Because I can, I can raise my hand and I can worship and it looks incredible. Mm -hmm. Snot and tears okay. is flowing from my face. <laughs> and those around me think, oh, He's having such a moment with God. He's so holy. He's so pure. But I'm crying because of the sin in my life. I'm crying because I have no relationship. I'm, I'm in falling apart because God wants to touch me and I want nothing to do with Him. No, it's not always like that, but I can guarantee you it's like that. You know, it's easy to look like you're this man of God, this woman of God, when there's people around you. But when you're by yourself, that's when it really truly counts. All right. So that's why we struggle to engage when we are alone, because we hardly ever truly spend time with Yahweh when we are alone with Him. Don't look at me with that tone. I know this is true. Okay, so he's just saying that for you to get to where you need to be, see, I can't just go to the gym and chat with everybody. All right. Come Have on. a good chat. Oh, yeah, those weights are awesome. I would love to push that weight. That's going to be a good idea. You know what? I'm going to see if I can push that weight one of these days. But I go to the gym for a year and never touch any of those weights. Mm. How many you understand? Mm -hmm. Me and McDonald's are going to become good friends. All right. Come on. I'm going to grow, but the opposite way. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. What I actually have to do is I have to put my, 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 what, what I see to an action, what I want to do. It has to physically happen. Mm -hmm. You know, if I want to engage... Uh, into the heavens, if I want to begin to see the things that Yahweh wants to open up, if I want to step into that place of revelation that is made available, I have to do the work. Yes. And yes. what's the work? Intimacy. Yes. The work is always to get to know Him, love on Him, worship Him, but yes. not when you're in a corporate setting, because that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, it's good and it's nice for us to come together so that we can grow in what He has for us, but only when you're alone in your closet. I say in your closet, but how many of you know, we don't go into our closet, right? Thank you, Jesus. Right. My closet is such a mess at this moment. It's so funny. Oh my God, help me. <laughs> and I don't even want to confess that to anybody. It's bad. I have to climb over some of my stuff. Oh my goodness. I have to climb over some of my stuff just to get to. And there's bullets, and there's swords, and there's knives, and there's. Uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Gun stuff, spanners, it's, uh, <laughs> I've got all kinds of tools in my cupboard. My wife's like, what's going on in there? I'm like, it's my stuff. Just stay out of there. <laughs> it's like, hey, that's your man cave. <laughs> my man, it's not in the cave. I can't go in there. I can just look in there. No. <laughs> but the idea behind you praying in your closet is that you find a place in your house where you're going to spend a long time with Him, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying all this, it's not even an introduction to what I'm teaching tonight. It's just so that we can understand. Spirit school is something you have to apply to your life. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, it's not about the corporate setting. You know, see, sometimes, I think it was on Tuesday, it was an incredible meeting. Um, and in the meeting, I kind of, uh, yes. there was a moment where the church would have taken that moment and made it a ministry time and everybody was going in. Because I said, Amen. Usually, when I say, Amen, flappy lips go on. And everybody starts talking to each other and scatter into the meeting and that's it. That's the end. Mm. But Yahweh was doing something in the lives of everybody there. So when I said amen, everybody was still in that moment. Yeah. Now the idea in the normal church is, well then, okay, let's carry on with this to get people into that encounter place. Right. But spirit school is not for that. Yes. Thank you, it's Lord. to train you, teach you, and then you to let you go. I'm not trying to get you into an um, uh, encounter here. I'm trying to get you the information you need. Now, this is not even information. I'm trying to get you to a place where you're engaged so that you can go do it at home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. I don't know yes. if you guys understand this. Yes. And I've said this many times. The reason people don't get what I'm teaching is because they want to receive it in like in the olden days. All right. Come on. In the olden days. You know, it's funny, and I'm going to say this, and I've probably said it before, but when my parents talked about the olden days, mm -hmm. they talked about pennies, mm -hmm. dimes, 
ounces, pounds, mm -hmm. miles. <laughs> when I come to America, because it's, in South Africa it's uh, the metric system. Mm -hmm. It's kilometers and rands and milligrams and uh, it's, it's just different. So when they were younger, that was uh, the standard, the standard system. I don't know which one. It's, we do the metric and this is the? English system, well, whatever. So I come to America and I'm, I'm right back to pounds and ounces and uh, feet. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so. But in the olden days, I say the olden days, but in the previous age, there was a certain way that we did things. Yeah. And Yahweh is trying to get us out of that way of doing things. Mm -hmm. yeah. But because it's all we know, we want to find ourselves going back to those back ways. To Right, come on. So I'm teaching something and it's, 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 it comes against what you were taught and you're trying to put what I'm teaching you into your old box of doing things in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And it's not happening. Mm -hmm. Amen. Teacher, pastor comes and he plays, he prays for you, shande bane, shande bane, shande bane, shande bane. everyone gets playful, they fall on the floor, some roll, some laugh, it's great. He imparts it to you, you wake up on Monday and you still kick the cat, right. like nothing really happened. Come on. And how many of you remember those days? Nothing happened. Yes. It was in the moment and it was great and it was awesome, but nothing was truly imparted because mm -hmm. it doesn't work like that. Mm -mm. Right? If you want something imparted, it comes from, from discipleship. Thank you, Lord. That's why Yeshua could impart to his 12 disciples and really truly only after three years. I hope you guys are getting it. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So, he ever loves to make intercession for us. Thank Listen you. to this. When my son stand up and said, here I am, send me, he was reflecting the heart of a great intercessor. Mm -hmm. Now, when we talk about intercession today, it's not a ministry. Guys, please listen to me. There's no such ministry. Mm -hmm. You can't make stuff up and they want to fight about it. I'm an intercessor. Well, congratulations. So am I. Well, I'm a seer. Well, congratulations. So am I. <laughs> you know, there's just a certain thing. I'm, a, I, I, I do, I'm in a deliverance ministry. Where do we get this stuff from? <laughs> There's no such thing in the Bible as a deliverance ministry. But part of your ministry is deliverance. Yes. Now people say it and I know what they mean. You know, it's not well, all I ever do is just cast out demons. Well, that's a problem for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because that can't be a ministry. Right. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you. There's more to ministry than that. And the reason we have this stuff is because the fivefold never did what they were supposed to do. Because what's the fivefold's purpose? To train the saints in ministry. And equip them, yes. yes. To equip them to establish who they are in full fruition. Yes, Lord. So what? Yahweh of Yeshua is what I have to step into. Mm -hmm. And I always say this. Do you guys understand what that means? Mm -hmm. If I, if I, uh, my, my shirt hangs in my cupboard, right? My pants hang in my cupboard. For my pants and my shirt to really have any movement in it, I have to step in it. Amen. I have to get clothed in it. Yeah. And then it has to do everything I do. Yeah. My shirt can't do what it wants to. Yeah. <laughs> That'll just be really weird, right? <laughs> my pants can't just do what it wants to. Yeah, right? That could be embarrassing because my pants could just decide, well, that's it, I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> um, no. And it's the same what we need to understand. Yeshua is just an example. I know people don't like me say that. They don't get it. But Jesus is not the Son of God the way we perceive it. Mm -hmm. Because He's yod Hey vav Hey. Yes. That's a trinity in one. That's three in one. That's God represented as a Father. God represented as a Son. God represented as a Spirit. Yes. It's not saying that God had a Son. Mm -hmm. It said God is represented as a Son. And Yeshua represents that son in the earth. And I get to look at what he did, who he is, how he pre presents himself to the Father, how he operates in creation, what he did, what he is still going to do, where he's right now, <coughs> and the fullness of what I need to become in what he's represented. Mm -hmm. uh, can we see that? See, that's what I'm trying to get across here. Yeshua, yes, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son. Mm -hmm. 
How did God get a son? Where did God get a son from? Then look at me with that tone. Where do you get a son from? I have to have a wife. Okay, wait now, now wait. You are the bride, so you now have to marry the son. Okay, but I'm also a son. So now I have to marry my older brother. Because God of ours is very confused. He makes statements that we just don't perceive. See, it's because it's a Greek mindset. The Hebrew doesn't see it like that. They understand what it represents. I step into it. And that's one of the reasons why the spear had to go into the side. Right? Because it opened up a place for me to go into. That's just in the natural so that I can see. The water and blood represents birth. Yeah. We understand this stuff, right? I mean, the only time I've ever seen water and blood was just before my wife gives birth. Mm-hmm. It's not really a scene I want to have played through my mind. It's often it gives me a glitch on the download. Like, wow, is that even possible? Can someone truly do that? Whew, Jesus, help me. I'm glad I'm not a woman. Anyway, it's because he wanted us to understand that everything he is, we were designed to be. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. Just, yeah. See, the Lamb was slain before the foundations of the earth. Ooh, yes, Lord. That means before Yahweh started any creation, Yeshua already died on the cross for us. Yes. yes. Why is that? Because that's the Hebrew culture. Mm-hmm. Right? Whatever you want to begin, you have to end first. Mm-hmm. So the beginning is the end. The end is the beginning. Yeah. Now, I just want you to have that in mind because that's awesome. the way we believe things, the way we perceive things, is not going to get us to move to the place where Yahweh wants us to be. Jesus says to his disciples, go and heal the sick in my name. Mm -hmm. And what do we do? We want Jesus to heal the sick when we say his name. So we go, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Father, to heal the sick. Mm -hmm. That's how we pray. Mm -hmm. We still want him to do it. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is saying, no, no, you don't understand what it means to be in my name. Right. It's not the magic charm, uh, blah, 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 in the name of Jesus. Ta-da! Now it has to happen. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't happen, then we quickly say, oh, well, you know it's not God's will. Mm-hmm. It's not God's will for you to be healed. Mm-hmm. It's God's will for you to die. Mm-hmm. I don't know what God you serve, but I know my God is not like that. Yes, Lord. If I pray for someone and they don't, uh, they don't get healed, if I, if I <clears throat> pray for somebody and the demon's not coming out it's got nothing to do with God all right come on it's not God saying oh well, you know what that he deserves to have that demon Mm-mm. you know Yahweh is saying that you need to be clothed in him yes, yes. clothed in who Yeshua is yes. so you can understand the power that comes from you in him yes Lord that's why it's Yod Hey Shin Vav hey. I step into the yard. I step into the hay. The, the hay is the revelation. The breath in, the breath out. Yeah. The shin is the, the three pillars of fire. Mm-hmm. Then the hay again. When we begin to understand that it's Yahweh saying, step into me. Clothe yourself in me yes. so you can be what I am. Yes. Woo. Yes, Lord. I want you to listen to the way, because I'm going to start from where I was. And I said, his heart was so moved by compassion in that moment in eternity that he was willing to give it all to save that which was lost and become, and because of his response, he set in motion the um, timings of his destiny. Listen to me. Yahweh has called you to some incredible things. And Yeshua being my example, I have to look at the way he does things. See, Jesus already died on the cross before he had to come into the earth. All right. Why did he have to physically come into the earth? Because the soul of man was wrapped around the spirit. Mm. Mm. The soul was overshadowing the spirit man and the spirit man wasn't free. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, the spirit man didn't have the full capacity and function. Because the soul overtook. And the soul wants to feel, see, touch. Mm. And, and understand. Because that's the world, mind, and emotion. Right. And before Yahweh or Yeshua can really break the spirit man free, he has to make the soul understand what is happening. Because the soul is idiotic. All right. 
Well, maybe not your soul, but my soul has a glitch. Right? It doesn't think right. It doesn't act right. It, it, it looks at what Jesus did on the cross and thinks to itself, why? These people don't even love you. They don't even want you. Why don't you just, just kill them off? Just, you know, just, why, why do you care so much? I mean, it doesn't matter. You're God. You just wipe them out and then you just build a, do it again. But do it, like I would think, do it right this time. <laughs> like God made a mistake. Like that wasn't right. That's not how it was supposed to be. You know, Adam and Eve was created and all of a sudden they sin. Like God's like, okay, what's plan B now, Lord? We, we, we think like that. Yes, Lord. But Yahweh, he had the end in mind before he started. Yes, thank you, Lord. Woo. Yes, yes, yes. Why? Because let me tell you something. There's nothing like knowing your wife loves you. Yes. Nothing. Mm -hmm. There's nothing you can, you can't explain how that feels to somebody. And the same with a, with a, with a wife, I'm sure. It, it, you can't explain what it feels like to know that someone loves you. It's an incredible feeling. Yes. You know what I mean? My wife been together for 20 years, been married for 15, it's not much. But just to know that we grow more in love daily. <clears throat> that I know she loves me in her actions, in who she is and what she represents and, and she knows that I love her. Mm -hmm. Yahweh is saying, I really, everything I did, everything I am doing for creation is so that they can come to the place in who they are and love me for who I am. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we get to this place now where you realize that, that you cannot resist Christ. It's when we come in and say, but you have to choose him. There's no choice. Mm -hmm. But we're given a choice. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we eat of the tree of good and evil. Mm -hmm. If you know who he is, which means, if I give you the good news in the form that it's supposed to be presented, there's no choice. Because it's not something you will say no or yes to. It's an absolute fact in the knowledge of who you are that that's what you want because that's what you created for. Mm -hmm. But we have to wrap the truth up in religion and nobody wants it, no one understands it, no one has the desire for it. Then you have to choose it. Do I want it or not? If you don't want it, you're going to go to hell. If you do want it, you'll go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want to go to hell, so I'm just going to choose it. Mm -hmm. We'll get to that just now. How are you guys doing? Good. You see, Yeshua had already been slain in the nature as a lamb. He had already looked forward to see and seen his blood shed for many, uh, but he had to reach the defending moment of saying, here I am, send me. And it represents you. Does that make sense? Yes. Y'all would say there has to be a time in your life, a place in your existence where you say, okay, I'm ready. Not when you feel ready, because that's never going to happen. Right. Amen. Well, let's be honest. Yeshua's body told him, do. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. <laughs> I am not going through that. <laughs> Have you seen what it looks like when someone gets crucified? Mm -hmm. He sweat blood. Mm -hmm. You know the agony your, your, your physical body and soul has to go through for you to sweat blood? Mm. <laughs> it's intense. He didn't want to do it, but his soul and his body wasn't in charge. His spirit was in charge. And his spirit knew before time was time what he said yes to. But he said, okay, I'll do it. We're going to go in and we're going to re-establish man to its original intent. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Yahweh is saying, I need you to get to the place in your walk where you see and understand what's available for you and that what you need to do has to be done. Yes. It's not about coming to church and raising your hands and singing with a nice voice. Sounds good. It's not even about coming to church. It's about being part of a family, yes, and it's about being in leadership, uh, having someone uh, to mentor you, having somebody that you are in fellowship with, and having someone that you're mentoring. It means having a father, having a brother, having a child. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes. Me too. Me too. Oh, thank you. 
Even though he was God, he had created the world and mankind with Yahweh. He still had the freedom of choice. Even though he was the lamb slain from the foundations of the world, at any moment he could choose to stop the process of redemption, which started with intercession and just enjoy his throne. How many of you understand that? Yahweh didn't have to do what he did. You don't have to do what's written on your scroll. God is not going to force you. I'm not going to force you. You want a scafafa? Well, congratulations. You want an ice cream toaster? Go do whatever you want to. But it's not up to me. I'm fulfilling my destiny. And I refuse to let anybody tell me anything. All right. Come on. Why are we not at that place in our walk where we say, well, you know what? I don't need three confirmations. Mm. I'm going to do it. Ooh, yes. If it's wrong, then I'll just repent. I've got to forgive me and carry on to the next phase. But what if it's right? Yes. What if what I'm doing right now is what I'm supposed to do and it's changing nations? That's good. Yes. That's good. That's I always good. say this. None of my children ask for three confirmations. <laughs> you better do what I told you to do immediately or there's going to be consequences. A smack bum. But we want three confirmations. All right, come on. We, we don't even read that scripture in context. Right. <laughs> we understand the world would have gone on. Universes, the universe would still have traveled their pathways but how would have had enlarged its borders as millions upon millions of people would have uh, um, cruised through its gates, right? Mm -hmm. But compassion moved in its heart. <clears throat> and it's in, a nature, uh, it's in the nature of the Godhead. It is what makes uh, us God like no other God. It's, it's what makes our God like no other God. But I don't even understand this. It's a very simple statement. There is no other God. Mm -hmm. right. Every other God is a demon. Right. A fallen angel. Ooh. Yes, Lord. I love it when Paul talks about this in 2 Corinthians. Mm -hmm. He says, you know what? <clears throat> don't, don't eat sacrificed food. You know, so the little one don't stumble. Don't do this. Don't do that. And then right at the end of the chapter it says, but just remind yourself. Mm. There's no other God. Amen. <laughs> Let me just say something. If there's another God, then God's not God. All right. Come on. The Greeks have it wrong. Okay. <laughs> you know, um, I've probably shared this before, and you guys were there. I think some of you were there. Um, Mike Barnett shares an engagement he has with the Great Spirit. You guys remember that story? So this great spirit comes to him uh, where he crosses or stands on four um, stakes at once. The great spirit comes to him and says, I want you to worship me. And he looks at God and he says, what's this guy all about? And Yahweh begins to explain to him that many have come to this point. And the great spirit came to them and said, will you worship me? And they thought it was God. They thought it was Holy Spirit because there's no, there's no, you know, most people won't know Holy Spirit if he smacks them in the face. Right. <laughs> That's where we get all the different religions from. Mm -hmm. Because they all come and stem out of someone wanting to worship God, someone loving Yeshua, just engaging with Creator, with the Creator, and then the Great Spirit comes, who's a demon. Mm -hmm. right. A demon from the pit of hell. Saying in the, in, the, in the purity, it, it is like the, the son of light. He wraps himself up in pure light. Why? How? Because Lucifer knows what it looks like to be holy and pure. Mm -hmm. He can present that image to you. That's where Muhammad got his revelation from. <laughs> That's where every other religion got their information from, from the traitor. Mm -hmm. Not the traitor, that's what he is too, mm -hmm. but he trades with who he was, mm -hmm. still today. Mm -hmm. That's why we have to know him. Yes. That's why one of the things we have to remind ourselves is that I step into Holy Spirit, yes. righteousness, joy, peace. Yes. I step into Yeshua, way, truth, life. Yes. I step into the Father, justice, judgment, and holiness. That's where I live and move and have my being. From out of that, 
I experience whatever is available to me. Hey guys, okay? Yes. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> this is God speaking. We ourselves stepped in to save those who had offended us. We reached out to the, to the ones who offended our purity and holiness and made a way for transformation. The price was unspeakably great. Yahweh's son had to suffer intensely and uh, at the hand of his creation. And we, the Holy Spirit and, uh, and Yahweh, missed his sweet presence during this nasty time. That was my own interpretation of my notes. But he wants us to understand how much he cares. How much they had to go through to do this. And he knows exactly what you need to go through. Yes. Let me tell you something. My kids are growing up without grandparents. Mm. Mm. And they've got incredible grandparents. They've got incredible aunts and nephews and, and nieces. I always get that kind of wrong. <laughs> but in South Africa, we have one word for a nephew and a niece. In English, you have nephew, niece, cousins, and, and it's just more than one. It's like one. So in Afrikaans, it's just you've got... Nukis and nephews, which is cousins, or uh, nephews and nieces. I don't know if I'm making any sense. <laughs> but they're growing up without any of that, because I had to follow my heart. Yes. Yeah. My wife doesn't see her parents, and she loved her parents. They were very close. She doesn't see any of her sisters, because I had to follow my heart. Yes. I had to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Can I do this? Mm. Because I know what Yahweh has in store. Yahweh is just saying, because of what he's done on the cross, what we need to do is made easy. Mm -hmm. Because in him we have a perception of eternal life. Yes. We have an understanding that it doesn't begin and end here on earth. Thank you, Lord. It's already begun before you were sent. Yes. Uh, and it's going to carry on after you end here. Yes. That's if you do. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He loves to make intercession. He is your priest, your high priest. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to understand, if he's a high priest, and he's my example, then excuse me, but you're a high priest. Amen. Amen. The high priest makes intercession yes. for those around him. Yes. <clears throat> Let me tell you something. The high priest makes intercession, and in the intercession he makes, there's judgment. Mm -hmm. Because he has to judge the sin of the nation. Mm -hmm. The judgment has to go through him. Once the judgment had reached him and he was okay, then the judgment can go to the nation and they will survive it. And Yahweh is saying that because there's a company of people that look like me, act like me, walk like me, talk like me, I can begin to judge creation now through my sons and daughters. Yes. Why? Because there's some that is not in him, that's not covered by him. So I pray for a nation, I go into the courts and I say, okay, Father, judge this nation. And Yahweh says, no, you're my son, you don't understand. Mm -hmm. If I judge this nation, um, whatever is not in me, whatever is not covered by me, um, will be destroyed and nullified. Mm -hmm. I have to judge the nation through you. Yes, Lord. You guys understand that? Yes, yes. That's why we stand in the gap. Yes. That's why yes. Yeshua said to Peter, <coughs> I saw Satan wanting to sift you like weed. Yes, come on. But that means that Yeshua was in the court uh -huh. when Satan made a petition against Peter's life. Mm -hmm. And he said, no. Because if there's a son in the court, then the petition cannot come to fruition. Mm -hmm. But if there's no one in the courts and the enemy brings a petition, I want 400,000 deaths in America today. There's no sun that stands in the gap. No one with dominion and authority over creation. Then Yahweh has to say, okay. Why? Because he's given the creation or the earth, the kingdom of earth to us. And if we're not doing what we're supposed to do, he cannot step in. He wants to. But he's not going to step in because if he steps in, he's not just. He's not justice, and he's not holy. Mm. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes, yes, yes. So I need to begin to see what I look like in him. 
who was Jesus before the was, was, was. Mm -hmm. He was the one that created everything. He was in the Father before anything was. He was the Father. He is in the Trinity. It's yod heh vav mm -hmm. that He has no beginning. He has no end. Right. And I came out of Him to be like Him. Yes. To be in His likeness and to be in His image. Thank you, Lord. When he came into the earth, he presented himself as a son. I'm in the earth right now, and he showed me how to be a son. He showed me how to walk on water. Now, we, we look at that, and we think to ourselves, well, he can't walk on water. That's not a, a solid matter. Mm -hmm. But the reason he could walk on water was because he was a spirit. Yes, yes. That had a soul and a body inside of his spirit. Woo, woo. That's good. And he was birthed just the, way, the same way as me and you were. I don't want to go into detail regarding that, but he came out of the same place. Yes. He was raised the same way. Yes. He sucked on his mommy's breast. Mm. How weird is that? Mm. Right? He was raised, he pooped his pants. Mm -hmm. The creator of heaven and earth pooped his pants. Mm -hmm. Just so that he can show you that he's just like you. Yes. Woo. But then he grew up. Yes. And let me remind you. Um, in the Hebrew culture, by the age of five, yes. you should be able to quote at least oh, one Jesus. full book of the Torah. And then you grow up, by the age of twelve, you must know the entire Torah off by heart. For you to move on and become a rabbi. Jesus aced every step. Like a master. Yes, Lord. Thank you. That's my example. If you're not succeeding, you're scafafling. All right, come on. That's just it. Mm. If you're going through a hard time in your life, and everybody goes through a hard time. But if you go through a hard time, don't blame anybody else but your relationship with Yahweh. Yes, amen. Amen. Why? Because the closer I am to Him, the more I see and perceive. Yes. The more understanding and revelation I have. The more the gates and doorways and all of what's around me has to submit Thank to you. what's mine. I grow, I mature, I speak, things align, things change. Because he's my example. Thank you, Lord. You never hear Jesus had a financial struggle. Mm -mm. Why not? Mm. He says things like, <clears throat> The Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Mm -hmm. And we immediately go, that's it, he was poor. Mm -hmm. He had no place to stay. <laughs> he was poor. But then in the same breath he says to his disciples, go tell that man that lives over there, the master of the house needs it. Yes. <laughs> now what in your theology does that mean? <laughs> He's the owner of the house. Yes. <laughs> Someone is just renting that place mm -hmm. from him. The rabbi with authority that gets the rumor from 5,000 people every day that wears a robe that's worth a whole year's wages. Hello? Yes. My shirt was $4. Mm -hmm. His shirt was $45,000. Mm -hmm. I think my shirt might be a little bit more than that, yeah, but I think so I'm not too. sure, I gotta remember. <laughs> but he wears a robe that's worth a year's $4. wages. <laughs> It's a seamless oh, robe. Wow. Apparently that's one of the rarest things you could find. That's why they couldn't even tear it. Mm -hmm. To divide it. Jesus. Are you guys okay? Yes. He's my example. Right. He's what I need to become. Yes. He was faithful to his destiny to the point where he sweats blood. Mm. We get to a point in our, in our destiny and we're like, nah, ain't nobody got time for that. That lady is cute, eh? <laughs> I only saw her on YouTube. And I was still living in South Africa when I saw it. That was funny. Ain't hey, nobody got time for that. <laughs> See, it's just too easy to give up. Yes. But when I understand who he was, yes. I understand what I am to become. Yes. Ooh, yes. Thank you. And it doesn't stop there. He gets on the cloud and he goes into the kingdom of heaven. And I'm st he's still my example. Mm -hmm. 
because I'm seated in him in heavenly places. Yes. What is he doing right now? What am I supposed to be doing right now? Hmm. But I'm on, yeah, on the earth. What am I supposed yeah, You've got a multidimensional purpose. Hmm. Multidimensional plan for your life on this side of the veil, on that side of the veil, and in all of creation, you have more than one thing to do. Hmm. But all we want to do is go to church hmm. because then I can take my tick off. <laughs> my do list has been done. I go to church. Yes. I go to church every Sunday for a year. I might just go to heaven. I talk to someone about Jesus and that's it. I'm going to heaven no matter what happens. We've made talking to somebody about Jesus our entire purpose. We've made salvation the only reason that Yeshua came to, 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 to the earth. How do you understand? It had nothing to do with salvation but all to do with restoration. Yes, Lord. Restoration is the focus because he had something in view that he wanted us to be restored into and we couldn't get there unless he opened the door. And in our restoration, there's salvation. That's right. But that's not his focus. Mm -hmm. Just like sin's not his focus because he looks at us and he sees us pure and white as snow. Mm -hmm. How are you guys doing? Good. It says your high priest lives in the highest of realms, not because he is God, but because he has uh, <clears throat> no thought for himself. When he prays, he intercedes with the mind of the Godhead yeah. and decrees the purpose of the Godhead on the earth and in the lives of man. Yeah. It is his nature to make, uh, to, that, that makes him an intercessor because he is uh, the mercy seat. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, we need to begin to understand what Yeshua has done for us through the blood. So that we can begin to see what's available to us. Christians are so happy with just going to church. All right, come on. And of course, you go to church because you're in need and you're sick and you're kind of dying and you're struggling with sin and you're struggling with all kinds of stuff. So you go to church on a Sunday so that the pastor can come lay hands on you. Mm -hmm. But I would say this, 90% of what we see in the church today is fake. Mm -hmm. Sounds terrible, I hate even saying it, but this is what I've realized. I asked a guy the other day, uh, he fell under the power of God, I said, wow, what happened to you? It's like, I was a courtesy fool. I said, what the, what's a courtesy fool? Courtesy fool. I say, well, you know, the pastor expects us to fall. Everybody just falls because he's, he's laying hands on us. That's what you do. And I thought to myself, that's the mentality of the church. Because if you don't fall, you don't look holy or spiritual enough. Oh, you know, you, there's, something, there's something in your life. That's why you're not falling. That's why you've never been touched by God. You've never had the rattles. You've never laughed and cried. And, and, and it's because, you know, you're not open to God. So for me to be open to God, I must laugh, cry, fall when someone prays for me. So what we see in church is not exactly what was, was supposed to come out. I remember in my, the church that I was a pastor, there was two people sat in front of me. They were both shaking and laughing and going through a manifestation. And I said to the one lady, stop. Mm -hmm. And she started crying and she apologized because she was faking it. But I didn't say it to both because the one was real. I couldn't see it. They did the same thing. Mm -hmm. See, we don't know what Yeshua did and who he was. Yes. Yes. So when we do, we don't need to make stuff up. All right, come on. Justin talks about the church he went to, and he said to the guys that he was saying, I don't want to be here. There was apparently diamonds and rubies all over the floors. It comes from heaven. Matter of fact, they started handing them out to people and they went online and they bought that same bag for five dollars. Mm. I go to a church and there's a smoke machine in the back and I, I know the smell because I've worked in nightclubs for many, 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 many years. Mm. As a bouncer, I know the smell of a smoke machine. So the smoke starts coming around the, the, the um, stage where they worship and all of a sudden that's the glory of God. Help us, Jesus. So it's because we just seek the things of Yahweh. We don't seek Him. 
But I know who he is. That's why I said, well, I, I, I've actually always wanted you to come to me. Because when you come to me, there's no evidence physically that you're with me. No one can see what you're doing. You can't see where I am right now. You can see my physical body and what I'm doing right in front of you. But my spirit's in the heavens. You can't see that. There's no glory that comes to me. Now, I have to share some of these things because it's part of my ministry. But if I'm just a normal guy like one of you sitting in the pews. Uh, pews, that's such a nice word. There's actually a pew right there. <laughs> in the pews, then the idea is, well, you know, for me to be seen, I'd have to go ministry, street ministry. I'm going to tell someone about Jesus, pray for people in the, in, the, in the streets, do all this stuff, because then I'm holy. Then I'm doing what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. All that stuff's good. But Yahweh is saying, well, I'll tell you, I tore the veil so you can come to me. Yes. So you can get to know me. You can see me. Because I want to show you and reveal to you who you are and what needs to come into full fruition. That's why I am your intercessor. Mm -hmm. But what is it? We understand that the, the high priest opens up so I go through him. So Yeshua opened up so I can go through him. And when I go through him, listen to this, and I'm going to close with this. I know that's the famous words of every preacher, right? Mm -hmm. 45 minutes later. <laughs> but... The, holy, the, the, the high priest would stand before the veil. The veil weighed about 400 kilograms. It's about 800 pounds. And the reason it was so heavy, because it was made of a specific um, woven material that was heavy. I remember when I was a kid, I used to have a knitted um, duvet. It weighed a ton. I mean, if that thing was on my bed, I couldn't move. <laughs> But I slept, I slept in a, in a rondavel, I don't know if you guys know what that is, like a hut outside my, my that they was built for me, beautiful place, very nice, it was outside the house, because that, I wanted that much, my brother had an outside room, we had three bedrooms in the house, um, I stayed outside and it was extremely cold in the winter, like freezing, like I had eight blankets plus this thing and I would tuck it in around my um, mattress so that when I climb in I cannot move, it's like the, if I, I breathe in, when I breathe out, then it squashes my lungs and there's less air to come in. It was that bad. It was heavy. Now, the, the veil is heavy, heavy material. Mm -hmm. The high priest was wearing what you'd call a dress. Mm -hmm. and there was no way that he was going to lift up the 800-pound veil. As a matter of fact, we understand that what happened is after every priest that died, the garments of that priest will be sewn or woven in to the veil. So at, at, at any given time that thing was thick. It was basically about 30 centimeters thick, which I don't know how many inches that, maybe 15 inches or 12 inches thick. So what would happen, the high priest would stick his hand through the veil, which is trans relocation, right? His hand will physically go through the veil. He would let the incense go in there. Once it's ready, he would walk through the veil. Now, the idea behind the garment woven into the veil is whenever he walks through the veil, he had the opportunity to walk through every generation of high priests that was before him, what was said to them, what revelation they had, the mysteries, the secrets that they carried. And the reason it was so thick was that he could get in there, and as he walked through into the other side, he walked through all of what was there previously in revelation and understanding. That's exactly what Yeshua does. He gets us to understand that He now is the veil. He is the high priest. He is the intercessor. We step in through Him. We are seated in Him. I step into Him so that I can have all the revelation, all the knowledge, all of who He is, is given to me. It rushes through me. And I begin to contain that infused dimension of knowledge that He pours into me because I step in through Him. Yahweh is just saying, I desire a company of people to understand that I have given them the ability, the capacity to be just like me in all ways, every way, and every given time of your life. Thank you, Lord. All the time. Let's stand. Yes, sir. How are you guys doing? Yeah. I say let's stand. You don't have to stand. I always say let's stand. And then someone, <laughs> I think, I don't want to stand. I want to kind of feel nice for me to sit down. Oh. Standing is really just the idea of activation. Uh-huh. Right, so let's go sitting down, standing, whatever you feel you want to do. Father, right now, in the name of Yeshua, we want to enter in. 
Father, you have, you have opened us up and we get to go into you. We get to live and move and have our being in all of who you are. You are the dimension that we step into. You ever love to make intercession, intercession for us. Father, we are seated in you, Yeshua. We are literally seated inside of you. We walk through you into the kingdom. And as we walk through you, there's an infused dimension of revelation that pours into us. So you can change us and shift us and propel us into a deeper place. And tonight, Father, that's what we call you for. We say thank you, my King. Thank you that we get to love and move and have our being in you. And you pour into us everything we need uh, for us to be propelled. I know you are longing for a company of people that know you. A company of people that loves you. A company of people that want everything uh, you want for us, Father. A company of people that open ourselves up with spirit beings and say, yes, pour into us, Father. Fill us up. Not afraid to work for what we need to get. It's not going to come to you. It's not supernaturally going to appear in front of you. And ta-da, you're going to be this phenomenal spirit being that's full of Yahweh. Revelation pouring out of you. You have to grab it and run with it. You have to go into it daily. You want the kingdom of heaven? Go into it. Seek it with all your heart. Not some of your heart, not a little bit of who you are. Go into it daily with all force. Father, we love you. We praise you. I speak life into everyone's life in front of me. I ask for favor in our lives. I ask you to open up the gateways and the doorways and all that needs to happen for us to fall into solution. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you, my King. In the name of Yeshua. Amen.